Hello, and welcome to The Listening Room, a spirituality podcast brought to you by SpiritSourceConnect.com. My name is Suzanne Goulet, and in each episode, I'll be speaking to you about new spirituality and how you can use it to improve your daily life. By offering you insights, tools, and techniques, you'll become more aware of your connection to a higher power and begin to accelerate your path to a life of greater joy, ease, and flow. Enjoy! You are a holy child of God. What does that mean? That means that everything that you are is an extension of your soul, which is an extension of God. And all that you are is lovable. That means that although the world may want to put you in a category that says you are that, what that does is cut off or shun a great many number of other parts of you that should remain quiet or unexpressed. There are many parts of you and the parts that remain unexpressed will rob you of your energy. When you're not expressing yourself, you are blocking an energy flow that is coming directly from your soul. And if that energy flow has nowhere to go, it lodges itself in your body and stays there until you find a way to express it if you want to, and find the courage to do so, that is. But for most people, shunning parts of themselves is what they've done to accommodate a world that asks them to synthesize everything that they are into one facet, one color, when in actuality, what we are made up of is many, many facets, and all the colors of the spectrum in its variety of expressions. You don't need to qualify yourself to the world any longer. No one is really telling you what to be or not to be, although you may feel like they are, or it is. What you are seeing if you are experiencing a reflection of this is your own judgments against yourself. There's no need to go there. You can let all of that go. Are you going to surprise some people? Sure. That's to be expected, as since they've known you, they've not seen this aspect of you before. Is surprising other people about yourself really something you need to be concerned about? You tell me. How much does it matter to you what other people think of you? Sure, if you have a spouse and announce suddenly that you'd like to start training to be a race car driver when you've never so much as set foot in anything more powerful than a minivan, of course you might raise an eyebrow or two. But after the initial surprise has occurred and you start taking those driving lessons and come home all excited about your new finishing race times and suddenly other things start to happen like... You get a cool new haircut and lose 15 pounds. What do you think your spouse will think of you then? What do you guess would happen? I'll tell you. Your spouse starts to think of the things that they'd like to do as well. It has an infectious effect. When you start to follow an inner impulse and you start to express an aspect of yourself that wants expression, All kinds of other things are affected as well. And the energy that's shifted and is coming from you becomes contagious and encourages others to follow their own inner impulses. And they begin to stop stopping those impulses as well. What would the whole world look like if we weren't suppressing ourselves of what we somehow deem unacceptable? These aspects of ourselves are usually only unacceptable by our own judgments of ourselves. A Course in Miracles has a wonderful passage about this that I'd like to share with you. And I quote, Only you can limit your creative power, but God wills to release it. 
He no more wills you to deprive yourself of your creations than he wills to deprive himself of his. End quote. You were designed to create. You are a holy child of God, and as God has created, you have been designed to create like God in your own world. Here's another quote from the Course I'd like to share as well. The extension of God's being is the soul's only function. Its fullness cannot be contained any more than the fullness of its creator. Fullness is extension. The ego's whole thought system blocks extension and therefore blocks your only function. It therefore blocks your joy and this is why you perceive yourselves as unfulfilled. Unless you create, you are unfulfilled. But God does not know unfulfillment and therefore you must create. You may not know your own creations, but this can no more interfere with their reality than your unawareness of your soul can interfere with its being. End quote. You see, by taking those risks and creating the way you feel those impulses flowing through you are directing, you are actively receiving guidance from your soul on how to create as God does. You begin to participate in the extension of the kingdom through creating beauty, hope, aliveness, and joy through your own being and in your own activities. You extend the kingdom of heaven further by inspiring others, essentially giving them permission to do the same. So consider for a moment now if there is a part of yourself that you would like to keep quiet and away from others, not letting them know about an activity or a passion you have for fear of what they will think. This is the ego's way of blocking the extension of the flow that is God and can only hurt you. You'll feel miserable and short-tempered for no reason. You may subconsciously feel that blocking expressed through depression, overeating, or other addictions, and if left long enough, that block will cause you to have health issues that grow and turn into chronic disease or dis-ease. You are not here in this world to be suppressed. You are here to liberate yourself, your joy, and the feeling of being alive and share that with all of your world and everyone and everything around you. Choose now to take one step for yourself in liberating the love that is inside of you that is God. Express yourself. Find your greatest often secret gifts and unleash them as your soul would have you do. It all starts with a decision, embracing all parts of yourself. Take an aspect that you love but is remaining secretly unexpressed and decide to decide. Make the choice, find the courage, and then do. Here is one last quote from the Course that can guide and inspire you. There is not a moment in which God's voice ceases to call on my forgiveness to save me. There is not a moment in which his voice fails to direct my thoughts, guide my actions, and lead my feet. I am walking steadily on towards truth. There is nowhere else I can go because God's voice is the only voice and the only guide that has been given to his son. As I listen to God's voice, I am sustained by his love." End quote. Many blessings to you all. This is Suzanne and I want to thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this program and would like to receive a free gift, please visit spiritsourceconnect.com. Thank you.